Hi, it's Dana Taylor here for our week three um, reading assignments. Um, I was given uh, Persuasion and Powers Chapter 12, Defining Winning or Losing. And I will say that there are several key factors to deciding if you're a winner or a loser. And the most important of those is setting a benchmark. Um, if you don't know what success is, then you cannot achieve it. So a benchmark can be objective, um, something you set an objective, like you're going to win an election, you're going to obtain reform on a certain law, you're going to get voter discrimination taken care of, or it can be something um, that prevents an action is also objective. Uh, an example of that might be um, the Cuban Missile Crisis it mentions, where um, Kennedy um, told the Russians that they weren't going to put the missiles on Cuba, or NATO. It's where we set a strategic communication to try and be a strong deterrent. Um, it's just like a parent. You draw the line in the sand. You're not supposed to cross this line. If you do, the consequences are. So, um, but benchmarks can also be subjective, and that means that we have a desired end result, but it can change, our end result will change. And the best example in the book was um, after 9-11, airport security obviously increased, and because um, we don't want to have uh, hijackers, but as the hijackers... Um, get smarter and <laughs> more crafty, our rules have changed. Like, we now have to take off our shoes because of the shoe bomber and et cetera, et cetera. It just changes as our objective in the end changes to a sub subjective thing. Um, currently, border security would be a subjective benchmark, in my opinion. Uh, Democrats five years ago were saying one thing and today they're saying another. Republicans also. Um, you know, their viewpoint has changed about whether they want border security or not, whether that includes a wall or not. So it's a subjective thing that changes. And so that leads into the next point of the book, which does the nature of the regime matter? So the regime or controlling government, their ideology, what they believe and why they believe it influences what is possible. So they hold all the economic resources, they have the military impact behind them, and they also have all the political influence, and they influence people to do things um, because they're in power. And there are lots of examples in that in the world. Um, it talks about... The Iran-Iraq War, it talks about North Korea, there are several examples, and I'm sure that you can think of plenty. Um, so then, are democracies better? And uh, their answer is that democracies are difficult. Um, setting a benchmark and determining what success is going to look like um, is time consuming, it's laborious, it's challenging in a democracy. There's competition between stakeholders, which means people who have a stake in the decisions that are being made whether they belong to a political party or to a specific group of citizens, they have a stake in it. So there's competition between them to be heard. There are often fights more about money and the control of money than there are about the actual policies being made. It's control. Um, and resistance to executive decisions that are made um, makes... Um, them fail to be successful. They're not going to win. They're not going to meet their benchmarks if people are resisting them. So democracies are not a lot better according to our text. And then the final point in this chapter is religion's role or the role of religion. And it said um, different religions re define objectives um, differently. So that looks different in different religions. Um, for example, the Muslims are really willing to sacrifice young lives. And then, so they list the examples in Iraq when they sent young men to die. And, and you know, they kind of um, brainwashed them into a martyrdom. It was the word that he used, the ideology of martyrdom. 
Um, so, <clears throat> that that's one religion. Other, all religions justify their ends, justify their means. They do it in the name of God, um, to some extent. Um, you can talk about the Crusades. You can go back all through history. There have been multiple times where um, they they did things in the name of God, whether they really were God's will or not, is a whole other ball of wax. Um, but they also use religion to legitimize their choices. And the example that the text gave was um, Vladimir Putin and the Russian Orthodox Church. Um, he um, has blessings, you know, it, that's, it legitimizes his authority in the eyes of the church. So he should be the ruler of the country. Um, and he's devoted to the idea of a great Russia, but <clears throat> so in the end, there's no clear formula for winning or, um, success. According to our text, um, I really liked this in quote that one satisfies expectations and achieves goals where they are known and understood. So that's really the key where I started this chapter. It's a benchmark. You have to define what victory looks like to you. You can't just go into it open-ended and expect it to be successful. Um, they used our war in Afghanistan and how um, it kind of went astray because there was not a clear objective and this is the defining point where it's going to stop because we'll have achieved success. It was kind of one of those subjective benchmarks that just kept changing. So I hope you understood that and that wasn't too fast and thanks for listening.